Once Thank more. You. Okay, yes, now we move on to our final talk of the session before panel discussion. So we'd welcome now to the floor uh, Nazanin Love from the University of uh, Hasselt. Nazdin will be talking about the reuse of norm and cementitious binders from the stakeholders pers perspective. Thank you. Last presentation of the day. Uh, great to like to be at. I hope you still have the energy to follow my presentation. What I will talk to you about, I will give you a brief uh, conclusion of what we did in our my PhD. So it's coming at an end, so I will tell you what I found. Some very short, brief background, because Katarina covered it. We have this norm-contained byproducts. It's good to use them in cement production. Why? Because cement contributes to 8% of global CO2 emissions and we can contribute to the circular economy. So we are doing two good things together. So what we want to do, find in our study, we first we see it's a multi-dimensional problem. We are looking at a sustainable material, and we are, this is a sustainable alternative material for a traditional material, because this has, cement has been with us for years, and the quality of this has been approved. So it's difficult to come with an alternative or innovative material. And the third dimension is norm, of course. What we want to find out, we wanted to find out what the stakeholders, different stakeholders think about the usage of this material in building material, specifically cementitious binders. So our first study, the stakeholders that we focused was industry. What do I mean by industry? Concrete industry uh, representatives, concrete, produ concrete producers, uh, or uh, federation or association, those that we will be using this cement, what they think. And we look at the Belgium context. Uh, how did we do it? Because there was no study on that aspect. So we used interviews, we talked with experts and see what barriers, what facilitators can be uh, done for this. I will go brief because I start my first study. So I will be short at the beginning and I will focus at the end more. So this was, a this was a, a conclusion. We found six teams in our interviews that we see, you see six of them, for example, financial barriers or quality related, lack of custom consumer demand, uh, lack of standardized sustainability parameters, availability of byproduct, but all of them somehow are linked to some regulatory aspects. Either they are barrier or they should be used as a facilitator. These are, I'm telling you the, uh, what industry told me based on our interviews. And we see regulatory certainty seem to be the core of our findings. Then the second study, we said, okay, then let's see, just maybe not just focus on industry, look at us, that we are building the house, like people like me and you, if we build a house, what we think about the usage of this material. So we look at the people are building or renovating their house, renovated their house within the last 10 years, because we wanted to involve the people are already think have, we, have, have been through this um, decision-making process. And we didn't just stick to Belgium. We add Czech Republic that you probably understand why based on the uh, other talks and we add Slovenia. Again, we continued with our methods because still we are in that exploratory stage. What we found, I put it in the simplest way, but actually if you read the paper, it gives you more details. So sustainability materials are considered as expensive. And cement is a really cheap material. So industry was telling us making something cheap, more sustainable, it's really difficult. And for the people are building the house is the biggest expense in their life and asking, asking for them to pay something more to be sustainable, it wasn't, very, uh, it wasn't very welcomed, but they said that, okay, I will pay more, but what I get in return, uh, for example, solar panels or heat pumps or ins insulations, all of them were welcomed as a sustainable options because people get something back. But for the, for the building material, they don't get anything back. So it was just one way investment. 
And we have also safety risk. The concrete has a long lifespan, and I said it has been, it proved itself. So to go for something innovative, first of all, industry has to make sure that they guarantee their product. And uh, to, be old, to be able to do that, they need some examples. They need the examples of the building has been built with this material, and they can make sure that it wouldn't, if something goes wrong, the people's life is in a stake. And uh, it's the same for end users. They need some examples to see. And what you see in this uh, financial risk and safety related risk, in all countries and both stakeholders were similar. But when we talk about health risk, it becomes a bit different. So when we look at the Belgium, there is a strong link between standards and norm. So usually uh, when, part, when, when I talk with the participant, they say that, okay, then if it's in market, if it's certified, it has a standard, a standard so probably safe it's in market, it should be okay. And for the industry, this is really important because they can take the responsibility, put it on, a, uh, put it on the government, say, okay, if the government is safe, so I shouldn't be worried about that. This was mostly in Belgium. In Slovenia, Certification, of course, important, but they had less trust in certification. So they also saying that, uh, yeah, it's good to do something good for the environment, of course, but not in residential building because they had a higher perceived risk. And for some reason in Slovenia, they needed more clarity, some comparative information. So to, in, in order to be approached uh, to this country, so I think they need more justification rather than just a certification. In Czech Republic, of course, everywhere certification really important, but and they were but more skeptical even comparison in comparison to Slovenia. I, when I usually present this, I have quotes from uh, from participants, so it's easier to convey. So by I just say it rather than just add it here. For example, in Slo in Czech Republic, they were saying that yeah, I use it in the fence, but not even my garage, for example, because it radiates. My car is there; it's still a closed area, so the risk even was higher in comparison to other examples that we're hearing from countries. And as Katarina explained, there is some familiarity with the fly ash and radon use, so it is a problematic topic. But here we see a bit difference between two stakeholders. Industry was saying that I don't think the government would approve them, but if they do. Okay, I think it should be safe. It should, government would be careful about that after whatever happened. But I don't think it would be worthwhile because if we do it, oh, people know about the catastrophic problems and it wouldn't be worthwhile to do it because they associate it with cancers and all the problems. So either they don't think this is, they don't have that high health perceived risk like even industry in Slovenia, they still feel like it wouldn't, it wouldn't work here. That was a very small summary. Now we go for third study. What did we do in third study? In our third study, we got the information uh, that we got from our interviews and we create some hypothesis. For the industry, we thought that, okay, then it's a small population. First, we start with Belgium. We have more information for now is okay. Let's focus on end users. So we, use, we did the same study, but in a quantitative way, we built a survey based on literature and other findings from qualitative study. We developed a hypothetical model. I will not bore you, but it's important to know why and how. So uh, we, we have, when, as, a, as a people, sometimes when we make a decision, what we think. Uh, we weigh risk and benefits, yeah? If it's risky, if I get the benefits, we make the decision based on that. And uh, what we found, how we bring this risk from our interviews, what risk and benefits we identify, we come we brought, brought here and added to the model. And we believe that this influenced our attitude and finally intention. Health risk is important, and especially my, uh, me as a PhD in this project, so we want to dig in a bit deeper into health. So if they think something is perceived as health risk, but why? So we added some psychometric risk characteristic. Is it because it's a novel? Is that familiar? Is it because the risks are not immediate, are not observable, or is it because it's because of the catastrophic uh, consequences and so on? But yeah, I said we make a decision when we think and weigh risk and benefits, but as a human, we are not always like that. We are not always rational. If we think about everything, it's impossible to make decisions. So that's where our feelings come. So uh, for the feeling, uh, we give them a text. 
very short brief text and we ask them uh, as soon as they read the text at the beginning of survey which feeling is evoked in you and for the feeling we didn't mention it as a uh, one continuum spectrum so if they say one is negative if they say seven is positive we follow the some uh, recommendation from some studies we measure them as two things if it's hope interest curiosity is positive if it's doubt worry it was negative so we measure them and to see if how is it influencing our decision making because based on literature when we read when we understand when we hear about uh, innovative material or in a, in new technology the feeling comes in you if you have a positive feeling you see more benefits and less risk so it influences how we how we perceive them and finally trust uh, trust plays a really important role always but especially about new technology when you don't have much information you rely on trust about the different stakeholders and you rely on their goodwill by saying about goodwill we look at six actors we eliminated one based on the analysis but you see the actors here again for the trust we didn't ask oh do you trust this actor we look at two dimensions do you think these actors would have the competence to assess the risks of this material so that's the competence aspect and do you think they would disclose the information so we look at the intention and integrity because two different things you might think your government would give you the right information but they are not competent to assess so we bring them together to measure the trust and finally we added one item in our model based on our interviews what was it previous knowledge uh, for the Czech Republic it would be easy to understand because they related to previous disasters. They said, no, thank you very much. So uh, when they know about this radon or problem, they don't, they are not willing to. But it was interesting the other way around. For example, the countries like Belgium, people even do, didn't know about it. They associated with something, for example, a successful application. One of the participants saying that, yeah, I know, I know. I had a, a granite, top granite for my house. And they said that it has radioactivity, but we measured it, it was fine. So I think if we measured it, it's fine, it should be all right. So even the not exactly usage of norm in building, when they associate it, have a good successful feeling, they have less fear. Some preliminary results, because it's new, we, we start, we still like to dig in a bit deeper, but I would like to share some findings. So as we see here, attitude is highly influencing the intention. And as we expect, health risk and environmental benefit seems to be the most important actors playing. Of course, financial benefits and risk, of course, plays an important role and uh, performance benefits. But this is when we are looking at all countries together. So this information first, when we put all the data together. For the psychometric risk characteristic, I was surprised because the most important thing for all countries was the catastrophic of the so not that it's novel is innovative or I do I wouldn't see the risk immediately no the catastrophic uh, catastrophic um, consequences was the most important in all countries and as we see the feeling plays an important role specifically positive feeling when we hear about a new technology when we have a positive just initial feeling it influences we see more benefits of it of course as you see in the model both negative and positive effect influence all health and uh, all risk and benefits but positive feelings seems to be the most important one and uh, trust as you see trust also plays an important role uh, here when we put all countries together we see authorities uh, scientists we, we word, use the word scientists at university to separate it from research institutions and architects architects seem to be the most important one the last person maybe the uh, end users in, in touch with and as we expected previous knowledge seems to be uh, influencing the intention but what if we put the countries together i use the same model but i summarize it here to make it easier to follow so we see two most important health risk and environmental benefits. But if you see here, it seems like in Belgium, environmental benefit plays much more import, important role than health risk. So uh, in Czech Republic and Slovenia, they are similar. Health, health risk is a bit higher than environmental benefit. But in Belgium, it seems like, yeah, environmental benefit is influencing their intention. 
Other aspects, I put it based on the importance. We see, yeah, again, here you see the differences, yeah? In Slovenia, the uh, financial benefits, the most important one, but after for Belgium and Czech Republic, it seems to be the performance benefits. And if you see, if you pay attention to the numbers, you see here the environmental benefits as important as financial benefits. So let's say this product we wanted to push in the market, if you just focus on environmental benefits, it wouldn't work because in Slovenia, in, if they don't think they're going to get any financial benefits, it, you can push it as even if you push, if you say it is uh, it has lots of environmental benefits. And if you remember, I added previous knowledge. It's interesting. I still don't know if I can find, find why if we dig in, in data or it needs you need to do we need to do more research. But it seems to be. Uh, playing a significant role on intention, but not in Czech Republic. Uh, as I said, we don't know at, at the moment why. We might find out, but uh, it might need to be done further research. Oops. An effect, effect I said that plays an important role, specifically environmental benefits. When we have a positive feeling towards the technology, we see more benefits. Uh, but if you look at here, positive effects usually influence the benefits. But negative effects, but that the big first our initial feeling towards the technology negative, not only influences the risk, but also influences how we perceive the environmental benefit. And as I said, uh, I only put here the most two, for example, significant ones. And now we go for trust. If you remember, it was different when we look at the old countries. When we separate them, we see in Belgium, independent research institutions is the one that when they trust, they have a higher, more positive attitude and higher intention. What in Czech Republic seems the first one is architects. So architects, trust in architects seems to be the most influential wall. And in Czech Republic, also cement manufacturers. So what we see, I see in Belgium, they usually trust the top ones. If it's approved at the top, if it's certified, or if it's if the institution, research institutions say that it's safe, they have, they have, they, they feel safer. But in Czech Republic, they, they look at the final, final person that they are in touch, the person that has experience in the field. So, what does everything that we talked about means regarding the policy strategy? We, there is a need to facilitate. So, we need incentives. So, uh, both end users and industry need some incentives to move forward towards with it. Certification plays an important role, but balanced one, because it was mentioned that sometimes certification can be too much bureaucracy. The industry doesn't want to go through with something, but at the same time, they need certifications to have uh, to ensure the safety of their material. And one of the most important one that was suggested by most of the stakeholders that government should use this in their tenders. So some uh, environmental criteria so they can use it in their tenders and create some assurance for the industry and the people that okay then we are using it's safe so other people will follow follow it as a reference and force surprisingly both uh, industry and end users said that yeah they need to be pushed we're not going to do it on our own we like to be environmentally friendly but you, people usually say why me so when the government put the regulation and force everyone it would be the same rules for everyone, so it would be a plain field for everyone. And communication. What can be done? What we understood? Effective approach, especially targeting positive emotions. Maybe not just focusing, oh, what's happening to our world? What is, what have we done? Let's reduce the CO2 emission. Maybe some positive, we should evoke some positive emotions for them to take some action. And true trusted actors. Maybe if this communication has been done through scientists in the countries that is not that important, maybe it's not going to work. So we should know what channels uh, to do that. And what does it mean? Targeted approach. So uh, I have lots of things to talk about, but we have to summarize it. When, when I see about the which byproduct to use, how to approach government regulations, one country likes the incentives, the other like. So you have to have a targeted approach. You have you can't have one one approach and use it for all, all countries. I can't say based on our uh, comparative study. I think I was within the time almost. Thank you very much. If you have any question, ask me now or maybe later on, send me an email. Thank you very much. Yes, we have time for one or two questions or comments. There's one in the audience here, yes. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation. Helena Janjekovic from the Slovenian Oplast Safety Administration. I am wondering if you maybe investigate how people perceive uh, companies, that mean industry, if this is industry which is actually a global industry, let's say cement global industry, or this industry is somehow a local national uh, uh, industry in these three countries. No, we Thank just you. use the word when we look at the trust, we look at, we just said uh, cement manufacturers. The thing is that there are lots of interesting things to explore when you do the survey. But my boss, Tanya, was saying that stick to the, because we can't, we can't have a long questionnaire. If we have a long questionnaire, people wouldn't give us a reliable answers. So we have to sacrifice and just measure specific things. But actually, that's really interesting. Yeah, that's really an interesting thing. Maybe future studies can look into that. Thanks for the point. Okay, do we have any other questions or comments? Nothing in the room, nothing online. Okay, thank you again. Thank you very much. And also, thanks to other speakers. Great talking points and amazing. Wow. Okay, we now move to our last panel. We'll have a minute or two to set up for that. Thank you.